this is really difficult to watch. And it's particularly difficult um, considering that, you know, with a two rupee medication, she would not be screaming. Balance. This is a key principle that we need to follow. National policy should establish a drug control system that prevents a diversion and ensures adequate availability. Drug control measures should not interfere with medical access to opioids. Artur Shumanov has stage 4 prostate cancer and is living out the end of his life alone and suffering. So any country that is white or purple is actually got very low access to opioids. We have this major problem that in somewhere like the United States, we have a, what we consider the opioid crisis. We hear all about the opioid prescription overdoses that are ongoing, and this is communicated by the CDC, and this is having a huge impact around the world. But I alert you to looking at the data carefully. We can see in this graph that most of the opioid-associated deaths in the United States are actually from illicit fentanyl and heroin. There is a fundamental human right in question in this discussion. Uh, I want to reiterate with, uh, uh, what was said at the beginning of uh, uh, this panel regarding uh, the um, contribution of the UN Special Rapporteur on Torture in 2013, <coughs> Juan Mendes, saying that ensuring availability and accessibility of medicines included in the WHO model list of essential medicines is a human right issue, and the failure of states in this regard violates the prohibition of torture. The main problems that we face in Brazil is that the doctors, the physicians, don't know how to prescribe opioids because they don't learn it uh, when they study medicine at the university. And they are afraid to give the patients uh, the morphine they need. Palliative care in Brazil is not recognized as a medical specialty. When do we need um, morphine uh, for the children? Children with cancer, of course. But in the South country, it's important to speak about uh, sickle cell disease too. It's important to listen to the children who are suffering and their parents. One of the key words uh, that we've heard is training and education. We need to educate uh, people within the medical system. Uh, we need to educate doctors uh, on the importance of using morphine and, uh, and promoting palliative care in general. I'd like to point out that actually on the, on the occasion of this event, we've created a summary guide to the issue. It summarizes the, the, uh, the issue from an ethical perspective, from a human rights perspective, from a medical perspective. Um, and you can find it on the Opus website, preventsuffering.org slash pain. There's no ethical or legal justification for depriving people in severe pain with effective treatment. And this event is actually also a call to action. We urge governments and health ministries of countries with insufficient access to morphine to take the initiative and to make pain relief and palliative care a high priority of the medical systems.